Hi! Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Mindy Curry and I'm a naturopath in uh, Portland. I've got an office in Milwaukee, Oregon and I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And right now I'm gonna do a little video here on how to collect and process watercress into delicious medicinal food. Um, watercress is amazing. It's, it's delicious. It's been used for a vegetable forever, but one of the, the greatest things we've discovered lately is that it's extremely nutritious. It's got the highest, the highest value of nutrients and vitamins and just packed per calorie than any other food that they've found in your average supermarket. So this is a uh, one that also has been used for a variety of medicinal health benefit kind of purposes. So let's look in my creek down below me down here. Let's find some of this aquatic plant, watercress, nasturtium officinale. This little creek flows in the back of my garden and I have been so <clears throat> so overjoyed to find that there is a wonderful patch of watercress back here. It's a nice native watercress growing in this this little creek. There it is. It does also have a nice little flower. It's a little cruciform type of flower. It's a cruciferous vegetable related to cabbages, mustards, and arugula. It's an aquatic plant, which is generally found in or near springs, streams, slow parts of rivers here in the Pacific Northwest, and really in a lot of places around the world. Um, it's been used in Europe, Asia, and the Americas basically throughout history. And it's really making a comeback in the grocery stores in the U.S. right now because it's delicious and extremely nutritious. Watercress is not only a versatile vegetable, it's also, it's claim to fame is really the high nutrition lately. Um, science has found more than 15 essential vitamins and minerals in this, just this one little herb alone. It's got more iron than spinach more calcium than milk, more vitamin C than oranges. It's packed with vitamin K, which is great for blood clotting, bone strength, healthy nerves. It's got lutein and beta carotene, beta -carotene for easily, um, well. It's got lutein and beta carotene for healthy eyes. And like I said, it's got one of the highest nutrition values of any vegetable possibly found in the modern supermarket. It's got the highest Andy ranking ever. And that's a ranking on how much nutrients per calorie. And this one is beat out everybody else. This is the most nutritious green you can eat. So let's harvest some of this and take it back into the kitchen and uh, make it into some yum yummy food.
Okay, here we are back in the kitchen. Got our big pile of watercress from the creek. And what we really need to do is make sure we wash this pretty well and look at it. It is possible because it's an aquatic plant for it to harbor parasites. So if you got any little eggs or anything on there that you can see, you definitely want to try to get those out of there. And if if there is questionable, then definitely cook it. But I've never really had a problem with my yard, but I'm definitely going to give these guys a good washing. Spray off any dirt, any animal bits, <laughs> any puppy bits. You know, if you're really worried about parasites, you can actually soak this in a bucket with a bit of hydrogen peroxide for 20 minutes, and that can also help. Vinegar, baking soda, these things will can help take off any more contamination that might be on there as well. If you worry about your water source a little bit. Don't harvest this from a bad water source. I'm just going to say that right now. This is not something you want to take off the side of the freeway, some little drainage ditch there. Um, make sure your water source is not nasty before you get these guys, because they will soak up whatever they're living in. Okay, let's move these over to the cutting board. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to make for you today is uh, basically watercress sandwiches. It's a tradition in England. Um, they had quite a lot of watercress growing pretty readily and at one point it was called the the poor man's bread and it that can be seen reflected in in modern tea culture where you have uh, watercress tea sandwiches. So I'm gonna make a slightly healthier version of a watercress tea sandwich. And that one generally has white bread, the crust cut off. So I'm going to use naturally a, a lovely gluten-free bread, seeded bread here. And I'm going to leave the crust on. But I'm still going to keep some of the, the general tenants. A lovely organic salted butter, watercress, little peppercorns. And for this one, basically, we're just going to take the leaves from the watercress. We'll keep the stems because that's going to be great for soup, which we'll make later, a beautiful healing soup. But for watercress tea sandwiches, the leaves are the thing. And well, a, uh, a watercress sandwich is pretty simple. Basically, you take a couple pieces of bread Preferably a couple pieces of bread that haven't cracked. This bread is very flaky. Let's see if we can get this done. Softened butter. You want a nice thick coating of softened butter. This is an English sandwich. <laughs> I am physically incapable of doing extremely thick butter, but I'll do as much as I can. I like to put a bit of butter on each side, so that is quite a lot of butter. It really is. A little peppercorn, a little salt. And you add your watercress. And there you have it, a watercress sandwich. You want to cut those into triangles. Voila! 
your little tea watercress sandwiches. And the next use I'm going to show you for watercress is uh, just a nice simple watercress salad. Here we're going to have baby mixed spring greens with onions, very manly carrots, some dried cherries, cucumber, slivered almonds, and a nice vinaigrette. It's going to be very delightful. Okay, so we've magically prepped all these vegetables, and what you want to do is you do want to take just the leaves for a salad and take your watercress leaves, chop them down to a nice biteable size. For an amazing salad, we add our spring vegetables. Carrots, shredded carrots. Love it. Onion. Cucumber to really give it some, some watery bite and crunch. And cover that with a good couple handfuls of chopped watercress. Like I said, what I'm wanting on this one, I'm also going to throw in some dried cherries and some slivered toasted almonds. Now with this kind of salad, I usually just let the guests um, sauce themselves. We got a delightful balsamic vinegar, olive oil, extra virgin, delicious organic garlic and herb seasoning, salt. Okay, so the last uh, watercress medicinal food I'm going to show you how to make is a delicious watercress soup that I'm quite fond of. Um, and I, I do want to go back to watercress for just a moment. Beyond just great nutrition, watercress also is definitely a medicinal vegetable. Um, there have been studies that have shown that it may help ward off cancer. It can help with high blood pressure. It may help maintain healthy bones. Help balance blood sugar. And may even help reduce DNA damage caused by free radicals. So not only are you getting just like a total multivitamin mineral supplement here, you're getting a bunch of other phytochemicals. That are okay, so I'm going to make a creamy leek and watercress soup with sweet potatoes, some uncured turkey bacon, garlic, Bone broth, a delicious bone broth. You've seen me make that in another video. Mirupassi sweet potatoes. And depending on your preference, you can use organic coconut cream or whipping cream or half and half or milk or <laughs> skim milk. Really, it's, it's all up to you. You are the master of your magical watercress soup. It will be delightful if you just use some combination of these things. Okay, we're getting our pan heated up here. You're gonna pour a nice liberal amount, whatever amount you want, of olive oil in there. And add our leeks. Okay, get those nice and golden. Okay, so we're dicing up a bunch of those, or three of those Mira, Mirasaki sweet potatoes. What I love about these guys is that, well, they're white, for one thing, and they're not extremely flavorful in that sweet potato way, but they do create a wonderful starch, a wonderful whole food starch, and they have a very good, amazing mineral and vitamin profile. So 
this is one of those things that you can substitute out say a grain thickener or like a, just a cheap white potato for these Murakasi sweet potatoes in a soup. Most people won't notice and it will create a delightful kind of smooth texture. And yeah, and yeah, I'm going to pour that in the pot with the leaks. Let that say, say a little bit too. Okay, so I've got the rest of the watercress, all the stems and everything just chopped up there with some garlic and some uncured turkey bacon. And I'll add the uncured turkey bacon and bone broth into the mix. And we'll have ourselves some delicious soup. We'll add the watercress and the garlic later so that they'll stay as fresh as possible. And I'll add quite a bit more water than that. My bone broth is very concentrated, so give me four times more water. We'll get that up to a nice boil and simmer it for a little while until the sweet potatoes are soft. And we'll add in the watercress and the garlic and a little bit of cream, and it's going to be amazing. Okay, here it is. It's really gotten going. Boiled quite a bit, about a half an hour. And those little chunks of sweet potatoes are really softened. So we're going to go in our last leg here. Add in, add in the water, press in the garlic. And the cream. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use whipping cream. So that's what I already have open and that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use coconut cream or almond milk or regular milk or any kind of creamy kind of thing, cashew butter if you want. You just get your own kind of delicious variety of a creamy soup. And that will boil maybe another 10 minutes, get everything combined in there. Probably add a little salt and pepper at the end and that will be a beautiful soup. Okay, it's been simmering now with the watercress for another 10 minutes. It is softened. Getting some pepper, peppercorns in there, like peppercorns and everything. Help absorb vitamins in there. Stir that in. I'm going to go ahead and take a little scoop of that and see what that's like. Ooh, that looks good. Chunky watercress. Mm. <laughs> there we go. It's a little cup of delicious soup. Now with the bone broth in there, and the watercress, and the leeks, and the garlic, and the sweet potatoes, that is just mineral packed. That is a healing soup. Try it yourself. Enjoy. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.